Dear Hans, it was a great surprise to read your letter to me. I do not speak or write much German, so I hope you understand my English. I will try my best. I lost the piece of paper. Ein Stuck? Papier? With your address. And I find it Providence. Ah, he wouldn't have understood that word back then. Providence, that you now write to me. I am more than happy that you are still alive after this terrible war. I was badly wounded in the right knee in 1916 and was sent to Boulogne and then to England by hospital ship. I was out of it for a week, I am told. I was provided with a blue flannel uniform, a white shirt and a red tie. No going to the pub for a sneaky pint in that lot, I'm afraid. Also, I could not go back to fight as many did. My wound, my uh, wound uh, was too bad. Zer crank, very ill. It is funny, you say crank for ill and now we say cranky for illness. Not so different than us English and German people. I met my good lady wife, uh, Winifred, when I was in hospital. She is a nurse in the voluntary aid detachment operated by the Red Cross. Oh dear. Now I look back through this letter and I feel that I'm getting too complicated in my English for my German friend. I may be biased, but I think that she is the prettiest woman, a true best sort of gal, as we say, and she has a no-nonsense sort of intelligence about her. She is training to be a staff nurse and two years more and she will be qualified. You may be interested to know that I am now working with the family butcher P. H. 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 Phillips in the town. It is hard work for me as I struggle with great pain in the right leg and knee. My family and the customers are very kind to me. I can be quite proud, so sometimes I try to do too much. Um, once I fell over with a side of pork, half a pig, uh, on my shoulder. The spine cut into my face. It caused a lot of bleeding. My father, Paul Phillips would find it very difficult that I am writing to a German. Forgive me, not everyone is like you and me, my brother. I hope that one day soon life will be normal. No hatred, no rations, no starvation and brotherhood between all lands. Too many lives have been lost, millions across the world. And for what? Irre Freund? Frank Phillips. Oh, P.S. Greetings from the trenches and Happy Christmas. In January 1920, there came a very enthusiastic reply. Lieber Frank, Grüße aus dem Schutzengraben. Happy New Year. So here we are together again, at least on paper. I understood most of your letter and God sei Dank that you were also still alive. Um, I too am working with Pigmeat im Altem Schlachthof in Oststadt, Karlsruhe, uh, slaughterhouse not killing, um, cutting up pigs for food. Sadly, many are starving in our country and daily we experience poverty and hungry people at the soup kitchens and so weiter. Even German bread is Erzatz, made from potato peelings and some believe even sawdust. My fiance Wilhelmina and I survive just we hope for a better life in the future. Often we are ill. Um, but please, not for pity, I tell you. Um, the life of German people is now very grey with little colour. There is much anger in Germany about our circumstances after the war. So I will always remember your friendly face in Christmas 1914, Private Frank Phillips. <laughs> always good humor, love of food, good schnapps, so wie ich. Do you still smoke cigarettes? Woodbine? Yeah? 
Many soldiers hide feelings, but not so me. We are very much the same, I think, you and I. So expect long letters. That was a long letter, but they were the dearest words I have ever read. Why did the stranger's words mean so much to me? He wrote, Frank, I was lucky to survive the war. I have only one finger missing. The biggest black rat I ever saw bit it to the bone while I slept and the field doctor had to take it off. It was agony. I do have nightmares, not from rat, but from battles and good comrades killed. To see them in no man's land, dead and coal black from the cold will be with me always. So, not so much bad news. My Mina helps me and we have a great love. As we spoke at 1914 Waffenrohr, I attempt to write poetry. Es hilft mir. It helps to me. I have bad English, I think. I am sorry. Tut mir leid. Uh, perhaps we can share some poetry on a greener earth where there is no killing. The grass is tall and fragrant and no one hides in trenches terrified from bombs. And there are no big rats. Your friend. Hans Schwaber. <laughs> a frantic letter arrived in early 1920 from my friend Hans Schwaber. Frank, Frank, I must tell you of our Metzel Super, Slaughter Day Soup, traditionally made with Leberwurst and Blutwurst. We have a feast that begins with Wurstbrühe, a sausage soup also known as Metzel Super. This is a strong broth with fat floating in it. You like your fat, I know. This is a great delicacy despite its bloodthirsty name. Then comes the main course, pig's cheeks, snout on a bed of sauerkraut and some fresh herbs. Then we have our Swabian sausages. They are called Bauernbratwurst, Gelbwurst, Griebenwurst, Landjäger, Oberländer, which is a skinless sausage of veal and pork, and Presskopf, as well as, this may be hard for you to read, Schwarzen Magen Weiss, a boiled sausage made from pig's head or knuckle with fat and onions. It was quite hard for me to fight back with English similarities. Uh, and to emphasize the point, Hans said that Metzelsuppe or Schlachtplatte were the highlights of the slaughtering day. All of these washed down with a good German beer. There was nothing similar in England. Lincolnshire sausage, black pudding, traditional English sausage perhaps, polony, beef sausage, and of course, in England, our beer is warm. <laughs> what else? How could we possibly compete? We were just two butchers in different lands, exchanging a love of food, and we could have been working together side by side in another life. Hmm. <laughs> 